Hello, and welcome to the New Europe Studios on Place Jourdan. With here tonight, Mr. Davor Stier, a Croatian MEP from the Croatian Democratic Party, HDZ, HDZ in Croatian, the former party of the nationalist leader, uh, Franjo Tuđman, who was brought closer to Europe by the previous uh, Prime Minister, Ivo Sanader. Welcome, Mr. Thank you. Stier. You are born in Argentina, if we understand. That's right, yes, in Buenos why Aires. Did you come, why did you come to Croatia? Well, it was uh, uh, quite an obvious uh, decision for me. I was raised in that spirit that once, when the communists uh, will not be in power any longer in Croatia and Yugoslavia at that time, that we will, we will return. I'm a, a son of emigres. Uh, Tuchman, uh, I will call it actually more a national leader who was a pro-independent, uh, of course, leader for Croatia, made that reconciliation between the emigration and the Croats living in the, in the homeland and opened up that chapter. Of course, we take it from there and the country evolved a lot in democratic reforms afterwards and today we are part of the European Union. I was very glad to be also a contributor to that. Did your family fight in the war? Well, my family was, uh, as in many other Croatian families, divided along the different lines. Uh, so, uh, yes, we, we had, uh, uh, you are talking about that in, in that previous, yes. uh, in the Second World War, it was uh, on, different, on different sides, uh, the, talking of the father's family or my mother's family. Uh, but I think that at the end it was important that uh, we had a reconciliation of course based on two very important issues reconciliation based on Croatia having the right to be an independent nation but of course on Croatia on being a democratic nation that will condemn any sort of totalitarianism fascism Nazism or communism when you came back to Croatia you found a country that was in the process of being totally transformed Franjo Tuđman had died the old um, scarecrow of the Balkans had disappeared. He was considered to be a far, far right nationalist leader. And then when you came, Ivo Sanader took the power and he switched the, the direction of the party towards Europe. What was your role in this? Well, I came actually in the 90s already, and um, I have to say most of the Croats, uh, uh, well, I I including uh, after uh, 2000, uh, and including, of course, my party, had a view of Tuzman uh, primarily as, as a man who was leading the country uh, uh, towards independence and against the aggression of Slobodan and Milosevic. So he was the man uh, for, for that time. He was the but good guy at the time. He was the man who actually was defending the right of Croatia to be a sovereign nation. And that is, he's regarded like that. Uh, so uh, he has an overwhelming positive image. Regardless today whether the people are members of Asia Z or other political are in the center right or center left, most of the uh, Croats really regard him as, as the leader who, who brought independence. But of course it was important after the independence to move towards Europe uh, because Croatia wanted to be not only an independent nation but also part of the European family. And the uh, Asia Z in 2000 and uh, 2002 and of course after winning the elections in 2003 and 2007 uh, was the force for Europe. In, in Croatia. I was glad to be first working uh, uh, here in Brussels at the Croatian mission to NATO uh, because we also had that part of the Euro-Atlantic integrations, uh, then serving as uh, uh, a foreign policy advisor to Prime Minister Sanader and to Prime Minister Kosar after him, uh, and being both uh, working on NATO accession first, uh, but also uh, on completing the uh, accession negotiations with the European Union. My role in, in, in that segment was uh, mostly uh, in removing the political blockages that we had, you know, that we been blocked by our neighbors on a, on a, a, a land dispute uh, and actually a border, you are maritime border you are dispute. About Slovenia. I'm talking about Slovenia. So uh, uh, we worked to remove uh, that political obstacle. We had a, 
other political obstacles uh, as well. And finally, against all odds, uh, we completed our accession negotiations in June 2011. So uh, it was uh, not, uh, of course, uh, something that we could uh, have uh, done it without a lot of political will and also a, a, a large group of people uh, who work it uh, with dedication uh, in order to achieve that goal. I am really proud that I was part of, of that team. One other major obstacle that stopped Croatia coming closer to Europe was its involvement in Bosnia. Both Croatia and Serbia were involved in the Bosnian war, each one of them helping and propping up their own brethren from Bosnia. In order for Croatia to come closer to Europe, it had to leave Bosnia alone. Do people today regret this decision inside Croatia? Well, it's a, a question that actually I raised also here in the European Parliament. And it's not just a question of uh, the role of Croatia, but uh, in a broader sense, the role of Europe. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has a uh, European perspective. Bosnia and Herzegovina is not going to join the Ottoman Empire nor the Russian Federation. The future of Bosnia and Herzegovina is in Europe. So it is up to the EU to take a leading role. I was actually shocked by some statistics seeing that the Turkish Foreign Minister visited Bosnia and Herzegovina more times than any a foreign minister of Croatia or other uh, EU member. I think this is something we need to change. I talked to Cathy Ashton about that in the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, I sent several messages about that. Why? Because um, it's up to Europe also to be the leading force for the Europeanization of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The lack of European perspective could be very detrimental to the stability of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And of course, uh, here we need to be far more active. And I'm advocating such a new approach. You say that Bosnia has a European vocation. Yet, beginning of this year, we have seen riots in the streets, violence, um, disturbances. And people were starting speaking about the uh, Balkan Spring mm -hmm. compared with the Arab Spring. Yeah. Is Bosnia not a failed state today? Well, it certainly has a very difficult both political and economic and social situation. That's uh, uh, very clear to everybody. Uh, what we saw, however, was also manipulation of, of that. And part of it is because of the lack From of Europeans. Well, what we saw is a very clear uh, message sending uh, the idea of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, centralized, uh, organized with the, as a unitarian state without having, uh, you know, the differences accomplished in a federal model. What happened is that in the European Parliament on February 4th, we passed a resolution and for the first time the European Parliament was very clear and sent a very clear message also to our member states and to the Commission what should be the basis for a European new approach towards Bosnia. And we said in that resolution that both separatism but also centralism are detrimental for the European perspective of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a complex uh, country. It has three national communities, the Bosniaks, the Serbs, the Croats, and of course uh, also other minorities uh, are, are there, sh should be uh, uh, included. So uh, only a federal model could be encompassed and could guarantee a uh, European perspective for Bosnia and Herzegovina. The reluctance of the political elites in Sarajevo to accept such a federal model and uh, the, the, the will to centralize everything in Sarajevo is a very bad signal. Unfortunately, we saw these messages as well during uh, this uh, uh, moments of crisis uh, in, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm, uh, I'm glad, however, that uh, things are a little bit more quiet now and um, I think that it will be very wise to just take a look for all the politicians in Bosnia and Herzegovina to take a look again at the resolution that we pass uh, in the European Parliament and to really say no to any centrifugal separatist forces but also to say no to any centralist forces but to open up so that every national community has a right to elect their legitimate representatives that every community really sees in Bosnia-Herzegovina their own homeland. 
When you say the centralist forces, are we to understand the, the Muslim political class or the Serb political class or both? Well, I uh, deliberately do not attach uh, a, 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 you know, a national or an ethnic label to a particular political force uh, because you can find even Croats that are advocating a centralist policies. Uh, uh, which I think are, are very detrimental. I mean, Jelko Komšić, for example, member of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, has been advocating centralist policies, and this is detrimental to the European perspective of Bosnia and Herzegovina. But yes, it is true that, for example, in the Federation, you know that Bosnia and Herzegovina has these two entities, Republika Srpska and the Federation that was supposed to be a federation of what? The a bosnia Croat Federation. In practice today, is functioning as a Bosniak entity where Croats uh, do not have the leverage that it was supposed to be when the Federation was established after the Washington agreements. So we need to, why it's important to, for this entity, for the Federation to really function in a federal way, because that will be the model that should be then extended to the whole country. The federalism should not be stopped only in this, in this entity, it should be also including uh, the whole country, all the three uh, constitutive peoples, uh, Bosniaks, Serbs, Croats, they should, through federalism, have the ability to have their voice represented. Look here, we are in Belgium today. And I remember when I was uh, discussing this issue with uh, Wilfred Martens, uh, the late uh, president of the European People's Party. He asked me once... Of which you are a member. I, we are, we, I am a member, of course, of the EPP. And he once asked me, well, tell me exactly what, what is the problem in the Federation. I said, look, Mr. President, you, uh, you are a Flemish. Yeah, you are 60% of Belgium. Uh, but uh, it's not in imaginable for you that because you are 60% of Belgium that you will select who will be the representative of the Valons. And he said, no, of course not. That will be the end of Belgium. Uh, and said, well, this is what is going on in the Federation nowadays. That's why important, it's so important to uh, move on with federal recipes. This is what Wilfred Martens uh, said and, and, and did for Belgium. And this is what other situations in complex states in Europe are showing us. There's absolutely no reason why Bosnia and Herzegovina shouldn't go that way as well. So you are advocating um, federal model based on the Belgian uh, system for, for Bosnia. Well, I must say that um, they don't really fit because uh, in Bosnia you have something deeply flawed at the basis of the system. That is the fact that um, you have to be either Serb or Croat or Muslim in order to occupy high positions. And this went up to the European Courts of Human Rights. Yes. If you are a gypsy or a Jew, you cannot yes. candidate. That should be changed. That should be changed. In order to do that, you need to have electoral districts. Uh, so you have to remove uh, the constitutional provision that you need to be a member of any of the three uh, uh, constituent peoples. You need to remove that. But in order to remove that but still keep the stability and the democratic legitimacy of a complex society as Bosnia and Herzegovina, you need to organize electoral districts that will uh, really be representative of the will of the majority of these constituent peoples. So, for example, in the Federation, you could have two electoral districts uh, and then remove the necessity of declare yourself what is your nationality or your belonging to one of the constituent peoples. So that, uh, you know, in one electoral district, uh, where probably the majority will be Croats, in other will be Bosniaks, but they can elect a Jew, they can elect uh, a Roma, they can elect uh, whoever they want. It's not necessary that, but they will be. It's the same as in, for example, in in Valonia. They can they can elect whoever they want, but it will be representative of the people who are living here. And this is the idea of federalism. Uh, of course, there are people who are saying, oh, but how could, for example, one electoral district where uh, only a fourth of the population of the Federation lives, elect one member of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and while in the other electoral district there is far more people living there. But this is exactly what federalism is all about. Look at, for example, the United States. A big state as Texas has two senators. A small state as Vermont has also two senators. This is the principle of federalism. This is why federalism is the solution for complex societies as Bosnia and Herzegovina. That's an administrative and political solution, which can be superficial when it comes to economy. Because people were united by poverty now in, when they revolted in spring. 
uh, in the beginning of the year. They killed each other for years, and now it started in the Muslim, the revolt started in the Muslim part of the country, Tuzla, then it spread to Banja Luka, the Serbs, and then to the Croats in Mostar. They didn't care for the, for the system. So well, that's not exactly true. Uh, you didn't see actually revolts uh, in the, in the uh, Croatian parts or in Republic of Well, in Mostar was in the, what, what, what we saw was actually something very dangerous. With, we saw uh, people coming, coming from the Bosniak part, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the eastern part of, of the city where the, uh, there is a Bosniak majority, coming to the western part. And it was a very volatile situation. And they were in, the, in Mostar, which is, as you know, the main city of Herzegovina. They were chanting, this is Bosnia. Uh, and we want uh, only a Bosnian nation, we want to get rid of uh, Croats, we want to get rid of Serbs and Bosniaks as, as, as national communities, we want only one nation, one leader. This is very dangerous when we, we go down that road. Uh, uh, so it was, a, a, I think, a very important thing that there was not a counter-reaction to that, because if that would have happened, we could have really a very, very uh, uh, dangerous situation and, and even a conflict along uh, a national or, if you want, ethnic, ethnic lines. That was avoided, uh, thanks God, and thanks to the maturity of, uh, of the people down there. Uh, and I think that this is also something we, we need to learn. So, uh, really, it's time now for the leadership, uh, the entire leadership. I'm not just uh, 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 naming only, only one aspect and as I said I'm very careful not to put uh, uh, national or ethnic labels on political forces I think that it's important to talk about general concepts uh, as federalism and let me tell you something there is uh, Friedrich Hebert this, this is a center left uh, foundation but they conduct uh, polls in Bosnia and Herzegovina for a while uh, federalism was supported only by less than five percent of the Bosniaks uh, 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 10 years ago. Today, almost 40% of Bosniaks uh, are supporting a federal, a federal solution. Of course, most of the Croats and also the Serbs are, well, with the Serbs, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. What I'm saying is that when you are talking about concepts that could be applied and accepted by all three big constituent peoples, that uh, the uh, Bosnia has their uh, future. So we need to encourage them, we need to be supportive, and we also need to present the European perspective for Bosnia and Herzegovina. You talked about the poverty, you talked about the difficult social situation. Well, moving towards Europe is the solution for that. But in order to do that, they really need to accept a federal, mo a federal model. You are in Europe now, and to conclude on a practical, concrete note, during the war, your country was involved in uh, Bosnia. Um, you helped the local militias illegally. Uh, there was uh, trade in arms, there, were, there was black money. Then Tuchman died, and Croatia, again, in order to come closer to Europe, had to turn its back to Bosnia. Now you are in Europe, and you want to help Bosnia. How can you do it concretely without raising back again the old suspicions? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, you need to see when Bosnia was uh, attacked, it was attacked by Slobodan Milosevic. Actually, the Croats uh, and the Bosniaks voted for the independence of, of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And Croatia was receiving uh, the uh, refugees coming from Bosnia and Herzegovina, regardless of, of their ethnic background. Uh, actually, the leader of the main Bosniak party, uh, Mr. Tihic, he was a refugee in Croatia. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the view of that period, it's, it's not exactly as you has portrayed. I have to say that uh, Croatia was the first country to recognize the independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina as well. Now, it is true that there were uh, conflicts uh, between, of course, first of all, Croats and, 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 and Bosniak against the Serbian aggression, but then there was a, a conflict between Croats and and Bosniaks, uh, uh, and that, that has been stopped in '94 by the Washington Agreement when the Federation was created. Uh, what is now the role of Croatia? Well, the role of Croatia is to be 
uh, not conducting its uh, own initiatives there, but to be encompassed as a part of the common European policy towards uh, Bosnia. If we want to succeed, it would be uh, the wrong decision that Croatia pursues the Croatian policy, that Germany pursues the German policy, that the United Kingdom pursues the British policy towards Bosnia-Herzegovina. That is exactly what happened in the 90s, and that is actually a recipe for failure. What we really need to do is to have a very strong, very well uh, articulated common European policy towards Bosnia and Herzegovina and of course Croatia has to give uh, its uh, huge contribution to that policy both in formulating the policy and implementing it. And you hope it will be a functional state? I, I'm sure that uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has a European future and uh, we need to work in that. There is absolutely no reason why we should think that Bosnia and Herzegovina is condemned to failure. No, I, I resist that idea. I think that Bosnia and Herzegovina has a European future. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Davor Stier was today with us. Croatian MEP from the Croatian Democratic Party, HDZ, member of the EPP. We are on Place Jordan in the New Europe studios, the place where you can drink, relax, and watch us make the news.